Okay, so we got our, our new hollow torsion bars. This is uh, the adjustable spring plate. This one goes on passenger side. I want the adjustment screw to be on the bottom. And as you can see this is open on the end so you can actually... It makes it a little easier because you can actually set the inner spline on the torsion bar and when you want to clock it on the outside, you know, you can just push your finger in on it, push the uh, torsion bar in so it stays in the inner spline and doesn't accidentally pull out. So wow, these, these are like way lighter, these are 28s. These are way lighter than the 30s. The 30s are solid, so a lot more meat there. This goes in this end. Oops, all the way around, sorry. Oh, was right the first time. There you go. That's what it looks like sticking out the end. This end splines into the uh, torsion bar tube. So that's that. We have them. We have to stick the. Uh, these are the, the uh, rubber bushings for the spring plate. So yeah, we'll get on to doing that. And once that's done, we can start putting everything back together. <laughs> I mean, we could. I mean, this is all the stuff we need for the rear suspension. And I believe we have everything for the front suspension too, but the front suspension doesn't go in until the engine's in, so we can still work on the control arms and stuff. But yeah, that's it. Hollow torsion bars, adjustable spring plates. Pretty neat. Okay, so we assembled the uh, adjustable rear spring plates for these torsion bars. And we got the Torsion bars in and indexed. Uh, maybe I'll go over the math a little bit later, but but basically, what we did to get uh, the height we wanted with these torsion bars was crank the inner spline of the torsion bars in six splines. You know, just clocked it six splines from where it was then clock the outers six splines back. So basically increasing the ride height on the inside by six splines and then decreasing the ride height by six splines on the back. The outer splines move it move, move the ride height less than the inner splines do. So, so you end up net lowering the vehicle. Now what that would do to this particular vehicle if we were still using the same torsion bars is it would lower, it would theoretically lower the rear of the car by 1.375 inches. In this case we've upgraded to a much stiffer 28 millimeter torsion bar from a 24 millimeter torsion bar. So that alone I calculated will leave the suspension compress a full inch less than it would have before. So that effectively should raise the rear ride height by an inch. So essentially what we've done, what, what it works out to, if you subtract one inch from 1.375 inches is we net lowered the rear suspension by 0 0.375. So between a quarter and a half inch lower. And the adjustable spring plate should be able to give us, it's set, it's set in the middle, so it should be able to give us somewhere around an inch of ride height rise and the other way an inch of ride height lowering. So if, if we did the math right, it should all work out okay and we won't have to remove this again. Now one bonehead thing that I did do that 
Let me get the flashlight here so you can see it a little better. I completely forgot that there's a left and a right torsion bar. If you look on this torsion bar here, you'll see it's stamped with an L. And this is the right side of the car. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why is there a right and a left torsion bar? They're exactly the same, aren't they? And the answer is yes, they are exactly the same when they're new. The problem is, after they're used and the suspension goes up and down and you know takes a set and everything, the actual action of the suspension moving is predominantly in one direction. So what happens is the, the spring steel kind of sets itself into that kind of motion and if you took the torsion bars out and swapped them side to side, they could crack, which is not good. So, so what we're going to do, since the rather large pain in the ass to index these things, and we've double and triple checked that they're indexed right now, is I'm going to try to just grind off the L and the R and re-stamp them. So for future use, if someone you know, 20 years from now decides to do something with this car and they want to take the torsion bars out, clean things up, and put things back, they won't get confused and put them in the wrong side. So yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I knew that there were a left and a right one, but for some reason I just completely forgot about it when I was slamming these things together, so... Oh well. We will overcome that little faux pas. Okay, let me get on this. What we're going to do now is, um, after doing some grinding and stuff, is we're going to see if we can bolt this rear suspension back up into the car. Okay, well, we didn't get nearly as far along in this rear suspension as we thought we would get today, but it is in there. Still have to get... Um, these bolts tightened down and I have to get this one to line that this red mount here has a hole in the frame up in the back here and it's a bugger to get lined up probably gonna have to I, I set it on jack stands on the rear suspension mount which was probably the wrong thing to do but it's a lot more stable than the uh, 4x4s with the two jack stands in front across the floor. So I didn't really want to be crawling around under there wrestling with these control arms because they are a bear. The hub assembly and brake assembly is, you know, kind of on the heavy side. So trying to get uh, that big bolt back there lined up and in there is fun when you got this end you know all dangling around in nowhere and trying to spin and everything so <laughs> yeah if we ever have to do this again we're not doing it that way we're going to come up with something else but the bulk of it is in there try to finish up the rest of it tomorrow and then we can get back to the engine bay.